Uh, welcome to this virtual town hall regarding to the unemployment benefit in uh, the state of California. I want to thank you for joining us this afternoon. And also, first of all, I want to thank you very much for following our uh, shelter at home, the uh, social distance order. It is you that really flattened the curve and saved so, so many lives. So it's really a great, great honor for me to represent you. Uh, a little a commercial here. I have access to some of the, uh, the surgical masks. And if you need a, a surgical mask, you, you or your family, uh, please uh, uh, send in an empty envelope with your return address to my uh, uh, district office. And the address is 1313 North Milpitas Boulevard, Suite 255 in Milpitas. The zip code is 95035. And I will uh, uh, send four of the maximum for each envelope that uh, I receive. And it might take the, uh, a, couple couple more days but i'll i'll, I'll make sure that if you need it or well, i'll send it to you and please uh, wear it this uh, a surgical mask is actually reusable uh, according to my family doctor uh, after i used it for a, a day take uh, go home and use the a hair dryer just blow, blow it for five minutes and uh, hand it out dry uh, for, for, for a few hours and then it, it's good to go. So uh, if you need any mask, uh, feel free to contact me and the, uh, you can find the address on my website as well. And uh, we're talking about this EDD issue. I know it's been very, very frustrating. A lot of people you know, have a real delayed response and there's really no excuse to it. We are working as hard as we can. Uh, just last week or a couple of weeks ago, we uh, increased, put, put another thousand people at a call center to answer, answer your call. So we're trying to improve our response time for those that really need help to, to get your uh, 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 entitled uh, benefit. But I know this is still uh, a, a kind of uh, not as uh, good as the service that we can provide, but uh, I assure you that we're working on it. And to this afternoon's town hall, you will hear from the expert. Uh, they, they, you can submit your question by email me at this assembly member dot chu at assembly dot ca dot gov the uh uh yes the office is the uh, email address on, on the screen could you please put on the email address is is assembly member one word dot chu yeah there we go yeah please email it to this address and then we'll have staff member to sort it out your questions and we will ask the uh, expert at the end of the, uh, the session. And also this uh, video is, uh, will be posted on my Facebook and website. So if anyone who missed part of it can definitely go back and, and review it. Uh, some Congress member, Ro Khanna, uh, may be joining us. He may be a little bit late, but uh, I just wanted to uh, say that it's really, really be a great honor to be at the table at this very challenging time with uh, our uh, representative, uh, congressmen, and our governor, and, and our colleagues in, in the uh, state legislature as well as the local county and city leaders to uh, trying to address the issue to the best uh, ability we can. It's, it's been a great honor to have the opportunity to work with those leaders uh, side by side during this very difficult time. And they uh, will be uh, posting some uh, t telephone numbers. Can we get them? The first number, uh, the first number is 
Yeah, the first number is the uh, autom automated line that can be uh, accessed 24 hours, uh, seven, uh, 24 seven, 24 hours, seven uh, days a week to get general filing information, payment update and certification. The second number the gen is uh, for technical support. That's the one, 833-978-2511. That's for general technical support number if you run into any uh, difficulty. The third number is uh, only open from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and uh, every day. And you can call, they called it to, uh, to help with the application, appeal process, and case specific issue. That's a claim uh, support, only a, uh, open from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So let's go to the panelists. Uh, we uh, have been uh, patiently waiting. And please join me and welcome uh, George Warner of the Legal Aid at Work. Thank you very much, George, for joining us today and uh, uh, pro provide information to people eager to get their benefit. George, the mic is yours. Great, uh, thank you for having me. I think if I knew that photo was gonna be on a webinar, I would have worn a suit. Um, but uh, I'm glad to be here and I, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Legal Aid at Work and then I'll talk about some benefit programs that um, you can use uh, right now during, during this difficult period. So Legal Aid at Work is a nonprofit law firm that assists low-income working families in California. And if you have a question that's not answered during this town hall, I encourage you to go to our website, legalaidatwork.org. And the site has a lot of resources about frequently asked questions to work-related issues um, that people are facing right now. And those, those, those pages are available in English, Spanish, and Chinese, and some pages are also available in Vietnamese. And if you want to talk to someone about your specific situation, um, you should call the number on the screen, 415-404-90993. Um, that will allow you to schedule an appointment with our workers' rights clinics, which usually operate around across the entire state, usually in person, obviously right now uh, virtually. So that's, that's a great option if one of your questions is not answered during this town hall. Um, so now I'm just gonna give a brief overview about different benefit programs that may help you over the next, um, next few months and over the last few months. The first one is that it's just paid sick days. So if you're still working for your employer, every person in California is entitled to three paid sick days. Um, it's, uh, and, and you can use those for, for any sort of sickness. There's also additional paid sick leave that most employees are, are eligible for under the Family First Coronavirus Response Act. Though you should get an additional 10, 10 days of paid sick leave um, if you work for an employer that's less than 500 um, people and, and, uh, and in most, and over 50 people and, and also in most circumstances, even if the employer is under, has under 50 employees. In some um, localities, including San Jose, you can get those paid sick days even if the employer is more than 500 employees. Uh, so the, that's the kind of the basic, basic thing if you're still working. And the other thing I'll add is that under the Family First Coronavirus uh, Response Act, you can also get up to 12 weeks of paid leave um, at a lower rate to take care of a family member. Um, and that, that could be a family member who's sick, or it could also be a, uh, a child who's uh, home from school. So then there's four main, um, main benefit programs if you're not working right now. The one that most people know most about is unemployment insurance. And that's if you're um, able, ready, ready, willing, and able to work, but are unemployed through no fault of your own. Uh, there's one key limitation for that program is you have to be work authorized. You don't have to be a permanent resident. You don't have to be a uh, citizen, but you do have to be work authorized to access that benefit. And for the next three, three plus months, you'll get 
between 40, 40 and $450 a week. And if you're eligible, you'll also get an additional $600 to the federal government. The, 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 another important uh, point to add is that a lot of workers in California are paid as 1099s or as um, contractors, but in reality, they're employees. They're doing the same, you know, they're working a nine to five for a company but getting paid as a 1099 or they're providing the main service that the company provides. They're a janitor at a janitorial company, or maybe they work for multiple companies and one company is paying them as a W-2, but another company is paying them as a 1099. In any of those circumstances, you're almost certainly an employee and you're entitled to all of the benefits, entitled to unemployment insurance and the next two benefits I'm gonna talk about. So the next two benefits are disability insurance and paid family leave. And those benefits are for if you're not able to work because you're either sick yourself or because someone you, you need to care for someone who's sick or you're bonding with a newborn. Um, and both of those, both of those are funded through um, uh, taxes that employees pay, uh, employees pay into the estate system. And you can, you can access that, that those, those um, programs, even if you're very temporarily unable to work because of, illness or um, needing to care for, for someone else. The last program is pandemic unemployment assistance. And that program you, you, um, you apply for through UI online, the same way that you apply for the other three benefits and you apply for that while also applying for unemployment insurance. And pandemic unemployment assistance is really, well, the best way to think about, about it is a benefit of last resort. So it's a benefit that you can access if you don't fit into the other categories of benefits, but you're unemployed um, and either able to work, but unemployed because of a COVID related reason or not able to work because of a COVID related reason. And that the benefits under that program largely mirror the benefits that you get um, under unemployment insurance, although the minimum you'll get is $167 a week instead of $40 a week. And the amount of benefits you'll get is based on your net earnings rather than your gross earnings. But they're, they're large, they're, they're similar benefits. Um, and that, that's a kind of rough overview. And I know people have a lot of very specific questions about, um, about all of these programs. I'm happy to go into greater detail um, during the Q&A. All right. George, thank you very much for the presentation. Now we we'll open up for questions and answers. Hello. Um, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Hello. Okay. Can everyone hear me? All right. Um, so I'm going to read the questions as they are submitted. If we do not get to your questions today, feel free to reach out to the number on the screen or our office and we can do our best to assist you. So the first question we have is, what is a realistic time frame from startup application to when the applicant will receive funds, assuming that there are no errors or missing information on their application? Yeah, so um, a normal, uh, for, uh, for someone who applies online, and I encourage you to apply online through the EDD's website, edd.ca.gov, it will take around three to four weeks to get benefits from, from the time you apply. It will take longer if you apply by paper, and it'll also take longer if you um, if you if there's if there is an issue with your with your application. The issues we see most frequently are issues related to your identity, but the number one issue that I see is is related to people who have um, either worked off of payroll or were misclassified, and because the Employment Development Department doesn't have um, doesn't have uh, records of your earning history, it will take longer to get benefits in those situations. Okay, okay. good. The next, question we, the next question we have is, can I apply for UI if I have multiple jobs? How do I determine which work history to use? Yeah, so um, unemployment insurance is really a little bit of a misnomer. It should be called underemployment insurance and it, and if you're if you have multiple jobs 
and your your one job you've lost one job or you've lost part of one job you could can still be eligible for unemployment insurance so so you really don't need to as long as you're not working full time anymore you may be eligible you should report your whole work history um, and you shouldn't kind of pick and choose which employers to list, just list all of the, all the companies that you've worked for in the last 18 months. Okay, the next question is, should I file an UI claim if my hours have been reduced at work? Yes, yeah, so definitely. If only if uh, you don't need to have been laid off, you don't need to have been, um, you don't need to have lost your, or furloughed. If you've lost hours at work, you may be eligible. The, if you, you have to have earned less than $600 a week to be eligible in California right now. Um, and for some workers who have um, minimal, or not minimal, but less, less um, earnings history, um, or have earned less than $11,000 in any, $11,670 in any given quarter, those workers are gonna not be eligible at a lower, um, at a lower earnings threshold. So they, so if anyone who's earning less than $600 a week should apply, but some, some, um, some workers may still not be eligible even if they're still earning slightly, slightly less than that amount. All right, great. Thank you very much for the question. I want to just uh, a quick interruption here. Uh, Congress member Ro Khanna just joined us in, in this virtual town hall. So uh, Congressman, well, thank you. Sorry, I uh, got a little bit late, but uh, I uh, appreciate uh, so much uh, your leadership. And we, of course, are getting ready uh, to uh, vote uh, on uh, a $3 trillion stimulus package uh, in uh, Washington that would uh, provide cities and states with uh, much needed funding. Uh, it will provide another stimulus check for $1,200 for every uh, family uh, that uh, that has need. Uh, it will provide uh, additional assistance uh, uh, for those doing those essential workers. Uh, and of course, with unemployment insurance, uh, we're working very closely with uh, supervisor uh, with Assembly Member Hanson Chu's uh, office, uh, and uh, really have been pleased with our coordination. But please contact us if we can help in any way. We really want to uh, be assisting in. Uh, helping get those unemployment benefits or uh, if you're a small business and getting the PPP benefits. I know many small businesses haven't been able to get that uh, and we are, our office is working diligently on that. So I uh, want to commend you, uh, Assemblymember Chu, for your leadership, for your cooperation, uh, and I'm uh, working very hard to uh, uh, make sure we get the worker protections, uh, worker pay, which are in the stimulus, the uh, worker bill of rights that Elizabeth Warren and I did. A lot of them made it into the stimulus. And let's see where, where McConnell is. I mean, he's going to be a, a big obstacle, but we're going to pass it in the House. Well, thank you very much, uh, Congressman. Thank you very much for your services, taking the time, of all of your very, very demanding schedule in joining us. And uh, we're we'll, we'll definitely uh, uh, working with you uh, together, whatever uh, we'll be able to coordinate. Thank you so much, Congressman. Well, thank you. Thank you again for your leadership, Assembly Member. And it's really, your office has really gone above and beyond uh, in, in helping work with us and uh, look forward to continuing the partnership. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. We, uh, back to the Q&A. Next sure. question. Okay. If I... If I want to appeal my claim because I have been denied of benefits, what is the process like? Yes, um, so it, it, to appeal a claim, you need to fill out a form that's called an appeals form, and that should come in the mail with a notice of determination. Uh, and that notice of determination should, should say why you are denied benefits. We've heard a lot of reports right now that people haven't yet got the notice of determination, and you likely will need to wait to get that notice of determination before you can appeal. But once you get the notice of determination, you should fill out the appeal form and send it in to the address on the notice of determination. And you can just say, I disagree with the decision um, on, the, on the appeal form in addition to putting in your information. And then there'll be a two month wait time. 
and then you'll 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 go before uh, ALJ, which is an administrative law judge, um, for a different agency than the Employment Development Department to make your case. Um, feel free to call our organization and um, to see if someone from our organization can help represent you, or if we can find a lawyer to represent you at that hearing. Uh, and our our goal is to kind of develop a network of, of lawyers who are able to assist applicants in those appeals hearings. I do want to just add one additional note, which is that just because you got a notice of award that says zero does not mean you've been denied benefits. So a lot, so as part of the process, every person who applies will get what's called a notice of unemployment insurance award. And that's automatically processed by the EDD and, um, and it just pulls all the data in their system and tells you what data it has in, in, in the system. And for workers who are misclassified, it will say that there's no earnings history um, and that you have a, a notice of award of $0. So for, the, for workers whose earnings history on a notice of award is zero, they haven't been denied. They have to send a letter back to the EDD saying, you don't have my earnings history please, I've been misclassified or I was paid off payroll, please initiate a wage audit to include, um, include the appropriate uh, wage information for my unemployment insurance claim. Georgia, how many- Okay, the next question we have is- So Sorry, Samo, I was uh, curious to ask George, how many of those denial cases that your, your organization has been handling? Uh, We've, we've handled a lot more cases where people's wage data isn't showing than we have denials so far. So the denials are still, um, you know, I've, I've probably done two appeals in the last few months um, and a few of my colleagues have done others, but, but we're just starting to get denials now. Um, we've, we, we're getting a lot more cases where people's records are not, um, do not accurately reflect their, their work history. I see, thank you. Okay, on the application, there is a question that asks, are you looking for a job? If I am not looking for a job at the moment because I will be resuming my job after shelter in place, does this disqualify me for benefits? We have been seeing a trend where applicants are denied because they answered no to this question. Yeah, and that, that shouldn't be the case. Um, if, if right now, um, the, the Employment develop, Development Department has waived the requirement that you look for work because of uh, shelter-in-place orders. And um, you should be able to continue to get benefits even if you um, have not been looking for work. That being said, um, you should continue to check the Employment Development Department's website to see when uh, the requirement to, to actively look for work will um, will start up again. And just to be very clear, the requirement to look for work is different from the requirement that you accept a job if, you're, if, you're, if, if, if a former employer comes back to you and says, I have a job for you, um, you are, that's a different issue than actively looking for work each week. And um, you may not be eligible for benefits if you actively uh, decline a, jo a job Although if you decline a job for a good reason, like you're concerned about the safety protocols at that um, establishment, or you think that establishment is operating unlawfully, or it's otherwise, um, you're concerned about your commute to the job now, or you have childcare obligations now, you, you may be able to decline that job and still get unemployment insurance benefits. Okay, the next question is, if I have been approved for UI benefits, can I still apply for a part-time job and keep my benefits? Yes, that's, that's, a, that's a little bit of a difficult question. The answer is yes, but with some caveats. So um, you can, if you're earning more than $600 a week in a part-time job, you're definitely not gonna be eligible for unemployment insurance benefits. And, uh, but, the, the, but if you, the, the real rule is that if you are earning more than one and a third times your weekly benefit award, you will become ineligible for benefits. So if your weekly benefit award amount is say $300, you can't earn more than 
you can earn $400 or more and still get benefits. And you, if, you, if you're not eligible for the state benefit, you're also going to become ineligible for the $600, um, the $600 federal uh, payment that's being made right now to anyone who's on unemployment insurance um, between April and July. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I have a bill in the process to extend this period for that $600 per week benefit until next March. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we'd, I, we'd be happy to uh, talk about, I mean, that, that sounds great. And so another thing would be great would be to extend the earnings cap so that you can earn more than $600 a week and still be eligible for benefits. But yeah, that's a great, that's a great idea. Great. Okay, the next question is, if I owe penalty in the past to EDD 20 years ago, and I have been sent to collections, do I still qualify for UI benefits? Yeah, so that's a, I, I can't really speak to that in individual person's circumstance. I will say that if you, um, if you owed a penalty to the EDD, um, and you become ineligible for unemployment insurance, and the pe then you will will be eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance. So those people who are ineligible for unemployment insurance because of a penalty they received prior to March 2020 um, should be able to get either unemployment insurance or pandemic unemployment assistance. And the application process is the same for both groups. You can apply at um, apply online. So if you haven't yet applied uh, and you and because of a penalty, you should apply now. I, I, I'll also though add that um, that if you did apply and you were and you're waiting out weeks right now, the department uh, has has sent letters out to uh, paper letters out to let you know how to um, address how to how to get on pandemic unemployment assistance if you're denied unemployment insurance in April. And and uh, those those workers are unfortunately one and one of a, one of a few types of people who are really struggling to get their benefits right now that they're entitled to. So the rule, the okay, rule of the thumb. The next question. All right. The rule of thumb is when, when in doubt, go ahead apply. It. That's that is like that is a hundred percent the rule. Um, and uh, the second rule is that uh, that you need to be you need to be persistent about making if if you think you've been denied improperly to 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 double check to reach out to an organization like mine or uh or another uh or you know your assembly member or check with someone and be persistent if you have been denied benefits and you think that might have been an improper determination because the employment development department is processing literally millions of claims and they're the likelihood that they've made an error somewhere along the line is a hundred percent. They have made errors and, and they just have to, be, they're going to have to get fixed. And unfortunately it's falling on the backs of workers to get some of those uh, errors fixed. Great. Thank you. Okay. The next question is if a person makes an error on their UI application, what is the best way for them to correct that mistake? Yeah, so you can do a few things. You can um, you can uh, write a letter back to um, back to the employment development department um, on, to the address on the notice of claim filed that you received from the employment development department, explaining what the error was. You could also uh, try to call EDD at at the um, the claim specific number. Or you can go to UI online, which is the, the portal that you use to apply. And you go to contact us, claims question, questions, and then made a mistake on the application. And then you can write a little note in there explaining what the error was. So there's the UI online portal has a, has a question and answer feature that is helpful. Um, yeah, that is, that is helpful. OK. The next question is um, in the excessive earnings statement question. Due to COVID-19, my hours have been cut in half. 
I was working 40 hours per week. Now I'm down to 20 hours per week. However, my unemployment claim status says excessive earnings. I cannot live half of my income due to the high cost of living in Fremont. What can I do in this situation? Yeah, so, so if, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure if there's anything that this worker can do. If, if, you, if that worker's still earning more than $600 a week under current rules, they're not eligible for um, unemployment insurance or pandemic unemployment assistance. Uh, and if you, if you earned less than $11,670 in a, in a three month quarter in, in, uh, between October 2018 and September 2019, then you may become ineligible even at a lower amount of uh, weekly earnings. So it's, it's, it's not an easy situation for people, and, uh, for, for those people, and I um, empathize. So the next question, I know you went over the zero um, dollar notice award statement, um, but due to COVID-19, my place of work shut down. My last day of work was on the 15th of March. After that, I filed an unemployment insurance claim that was processed on March 29th. Um, EDD issued me a zero dollar notice. What does this mean? Yeah, so, so that means that, a, 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 that notice means that the EDD doesn't have records of earnings in the system. And that could be because you, um, they are having, a, having trouble figuring out your identity for one reason or another, or more likely, it could mean that you, uh, there's, an, there's an, or it could mean there's an error in the system, somehow there's just so, some processing um, function went wrong, or it could mean that you were paid off payroll, paid in cash, or paid as an independent contractor when you're in fact an uh, employee. And, um, there's instructions on what to do in that third scenario on our website. Essentially, what you want to do is you want to send a letter, paper letter to EDD to the address on that notice with your wage information and say that you want to request a wage audit. Um, and you, you can include your 1099s or other records of your earnings with that letter and be very clear that you, to, to explain why you think you are an employee and not an independent contractor. And really, the uh, you don't need to be a lawyer to do this. You can just say, I think I was misclassified or I think I was paid off payroll. Um, and I think I was an employee because, you know, I worked a nine to five or my, the company that I worked for told me what to do and I followed their rules um, or just uh, kind of a simple description of what you did. Uh, and then if you're in the identity situation, there are instructions on the EDD's website about how to proceed. And uh, the best, the best, um, page for information about that is the um, there's a coronavirus homepage and then there's a FAQ page off of that homepage that's, that has a lot of helpful information. And you can go there for information about how to deal with an identity issue. Okay, the next question is, it has been close to two months since I applied for a UI claim and have not received any notices or documents in the mail. Should I reapply? Yeah, that's a hard, that's a hard question. I would, um, it depends on how you applied. I think the first, if you applied online, I'd almost certainly um, reapply. Although first I would check, I would try to go to UI online and see if you can, um, you can register your claim and get more information about your claim by going to UI online. But and if you, but if you apply by paper and some applicants have to apply by paper, it might still be kind of within the window that they're still processing your claim. And um, I know that is frustrating and really not acceptable on a, uh, for it to take that long, but that's, that's kind of, that is how long it's taking to um, process paper applications right now. Does it hurt to reapply? I, I actually, I, I don't have like a super great answer about that. I don't, if you, you may not be able to apply if you applied online already, but it shouldn't, it probably, um, it probably wouldn't hurt to reapply. So I wouldn't, I think it's the, the only thing it could do is slow down your claim a little bit more, but, really? but, but I don't, I don't think there'd be that much. I don't think there's that much 
risk and reapplying. I just think that the better thing to do is figure out where you're, if you can, to figure out where your claim is, or maybe there's a typo in the address. Like, do, it, it would help to get a, do a little bit of um, to to do a little bit of work to see what's happening with your current claim before giving up on that claim and starting the process all over again. When you apply, do they give you a positive notification immediately and provide you with a case number so you can follow up with them? It usually takes, it usually takes I think, about a week to get the notice of claim filed in the mail. Um, most applicants who apply online now should get an email much earlier saying that they've been registered and uh, directing them how to get into the um, get into the unemployment insurance uh, portal UI online. So once you apply, you you have to once you either will get an email or or you'll get a piece of paper in, a, in the mail with a customer account number. And once you either get that email or the account number, you'll be able to use the portal to manage your claim. Uh, but people who apply on paper, it might take a little bit longer for all that stuff to happen. Or, or actually, actually a fair, not just a little bit longer, much longer. And um, that's why it's important to encourage people to use the online system, even if it means, you know, sitting with a, sitting next, sitting with a relative or ha having a relative help you over the phone um, uh, or kind of, you know, asking for help to get used online system. And is it safe to say if I waited for 10 days and have not received a, a notification by mail, um, I should reapply? Uh, if you applied online, I would oh. before, I would, I wouldn't that early, I wouldn't reapply. I would just, I would, um, I would, Either I would either call the DDD or use the online portal to check the status of your application, because at that point you should, um, at, by ten days in, you should be able to access the, the online portal and see what's happening. If you if you apply by paper, and I don't think you'll get something within ten days, likely. Okay. Okay. The next question is, if I was employed as a contractor and was laid off due to COVID-19, can I still collect EDD even if I was a contractor and not a permanent employee? Yeah, so this, is, this, this um, question has a few different issues in it. So first, it, you don't have to be a permanent employee to get unemployment insurance benefits. If you're a temporary employee for a company and then you're laid off and you have, you have the work history, you'll be eligible for unemployment insurance. And if you don't have the enough work history to be eligible for unemployment insurance, then you should be able to get onto pandemic unemployment assistance. Uh, and then the, the question also asks, if I was a contractor, not a permanent employee, um, what matter if you're a contractor, a true independent contractor, then you won't be eligible for unemployment insurance because you're, because, um, Unemployment insurance is a benefit for employees only, but um, but working part time for a com company does not make you a contractor. It makes you a part time employee, and working temporarily for a company um, doesn't make doesn't necessarily make you a contractor either. You can be a temporary temporary employee. You, know, you can work for a company as an employee for a day or an hour. Um, so. If you are called a contractor, but you know you're you're a coder for a company that does computer coding, or um, a photographer for a photography company, or um, or a janitor for a janitorial company, you're probably an employee. And in that case, you sh you are eligible for, eligible for unemployment insurance benefits, but it will take longer to get those benefits. And 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 you you can it's it's a little bit complicated the way the EDD has set it up but you may also be routed into pandemic unemployment assistance benefits temporarily. And uh, I, the, in the long term, you'll, it'll be more advantageous for you to get into the unemployment insurance system. So it's important to assert, your, assert the fact that you are an employee and not a contractor. Or you were you were you should have lawfully been class you should have lawfully been an employee even though you were called a contractor by your by the company you work for. How do you distinguish that? Could you uh, 
give us a definition of what's a contractor? Is that 1099 employee are always considered a contractor? Yeah, so I think, so the second part is a, a no. <laughs> so, so a 1099 will tell you what the employer is calling you. So if you're getting a 1099, then the employer is calling you a contractor. But really, the um, it's a little complicated because the because California law changed in 2020, so now more people are employees. But the law that actually applies for a lot of people in unemployment is still the old law, for because their claims were in 2019. But the rule, the easiest way to think about it, it is that um, it's about control. So if the company has control over how you're doing your work um, or when you're doing your work, um, then you're an employee. And if you really are the one who's controlling, um, you know, all the aspects of your work, and then but and are just delivering them an, an end product at the end of the end of the week, then or end of the month, then you're a contractor. But like, if you're a janitor who works from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m., they're controlling your hours, so you're going to be an employee. Um, if you're a coder working for a coding company, you're probably being managed by someone who's in the company. Um, you're probably being, there's, there's likely a level of control that will make you an employee, even under the old standard. Under the new standard, which is starting to, will start to become applicable um, in April and definitely in June, um, if you're, you're an employee, as long as you're not, as long as you don't hold yourself out as your own business, you're an employer if you're doing this, doing the core type of work that the company does, and you're an employee um, if the company, if you're controlled by the company. So it's a broader standard. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the second part would be: Are Uber Lyft drivers eligible for unemployment? So, so yes. So that that kind of is a follow up to the last question, and. Uh, and um, the the Lyft and Uber drivers are are um, there's Lyft and Uber have enough control over the drivers that they are employees under the law, and um, even though they're classified as contractors by those companies, and we have seen many people get um, unemployment insurance uh, as Lyft and Uber drivers in the last few months and in more in the last few years. Uh, that being said, um, independent uh, or Lyft and Uber drivers have the option of, of stating on the, on the UI, on, on the unemployment insurance application online, they have the option of not listing their past employer and accessing pandemic unemployment assistance, at least temporarily. Um, and that may be a better option for some drivers because they'll get the money faster. In the long term, it's almost certainly going to be a worse option because the uh, workers will likely be able to get unemployment insurance for a longer time period because unemployment insurance will be based on their gross wages rather than their net earnings, which are oftentimes much smaller when you're a rideshare driver because you deduct issues like deduct costs like gas and wear and tear in your car and um, other other expenses and because the pandemic unemployment assistance has a slightly a slightly less generous system if you are accidentally overpaid by the system so so we recommend that drivers if they are financially able to to fight to fight to get the unemployment insurance benefits that they are owed and we also hope that the EDD is, uh, holds up its end of the bargain and uh, makes it, makes it uh, easy for people who are entitled to unemployment insurance to access those benefits. Those two are, are mutually exclu uh, exclusive? Yes, so if, you're, if, you, if you get unemployment insurance, you cannot, it, one of the requirements of pandemic unemployment employment assistance is that you are ineligible for not. unemployment insurance. So it's, 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 it's okay. mutually exclusive. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. The next question is my address and the account got changed to a different address where the ADD debit card has been sent. They certify the benefits with paper. How can this be fixed? 
Yeah, so, th so that sounds like a fraud situation to me. And um, I would encourage, um, I would encourage them to report the fraud online. And there's a, I think it's askedd.edd.ca.gov slash report fraud, but you can also just Google EDD report fraud. Um, and I'd, I'd report that as fraud. And I'd also go online and uh, get your address changed through UI online. And I'd also call Bank of America to make sure that your debit card, to freeze that debit card and get a new debit card to the right address. So that, that definitely sounds like a fraud situation to me. Hmm. Okay, next question is, due to my application having a uh, social security number issue with the back office, what will happen to all the weeks I miss unemployment pay? Yeah, so for, pe so for people who've, whose claims have taken longer to process for any number of reasons, including an identity issue, you should get benefits um, as, as of the week you filed. And you should really get benefits as of the week you first became underemployed or unemployed. And we have heard of some workers who have gotten benefits as of the week they filed, but because of one of numerous issues with the system in the world, they took a few weeks to actually apply. So, you know, they, they couldn't get in, they couldn't get, a, get into the phone system for a few weeks, or they had trouble accessing a computer because of the pandemic, or they just didn't understand that they, could access these benefits when they're furloughed or when they're uh, when they're underemployed. If so, if you if you applied and got benefits as of the week you filed, but not as of the week that you first became unemployed, unemployed or underemployed, you should write a letter to the department and say I'm entitled to benefits for the weeks that I didn't get benefits and uh, for, for, as of the week I was un underemployed or unemployed. Um, I had a good reason, or what's what legally is called good cause, but a good reason for the delay, um, including the fact that there was a global pandemic, the EDD is having trouble answering their phone lines in an efficient and appropriate manner, um, or one of many other good reasons for taking some time to apply. Okay, the next question is, can I file a UI claim while in disability, while on disability? Yes, that's that's a pretty complicated issue. Um, and I, I, I can give some general advice by encourage people in that situation to call our hotline. Um, but the, the short answer is that you have to be able and available to work to get unemployment insurance benefits. And usually when you're on disability, it's because you're unable to work. So, you, so they're usually mutually ex exclusive benefits. That being said, some people might, might be on some forms of disability like, um, including federal disability, um, so, so SSDI or SSI. Um, and those people may be able to may be able to work with under certain limited conditions. And if you're in that situation where you're able to work in, in, uh, in, a, in, a limited, in limited circumstances or with an accommodation, you may be able to access unemployment insurance in addition to your um, disability benefits. And you can also toggle between the two benefits. So if you get sick for a week, then you can be on disability insurance for that week. And then if you um, are no longer sick, but also are unemployed, then you can be on unemployment insurance for that week. Um, and I, I personally wish that the systems were more compatible so you wouldn't have to apply twice. But unfortunately in that situation, you do have to apply twice, one for each benefit. Okay, the next question is, I was told to take either 12 days of pay time off within two months or take 20% pay cut. Since we have been forced to take a PTO, are we eligible for applying unemployment benefits for those days? So if you were getting paid while taking time off, it, uh, you're not, unfortunately, you're, you're not gonna be eligible for unemployment insurance in that situation. You're also not eligible for unemployment insurance if you took a pay cut but your hours weren't reduced. If you're still working full time, you're not eligible for unemployment insurance benefits. It, depending on the scope of the pay cut, it may, the, get, having a, lar a large pay cut may be a, a good reason to quit your job and then become eligible for unemployment insurance, but it's safest to talk to 
an attorney about your specific situation before quitting your job because of a pay cut, because it may not be a good reason to quit. And then you won't, won't be eligible for unemployment insurance benefits. The income threshold okay. is the next question. Is the income threshold is $600. So if I take a pay cut and put me below $600 a week, can I apply for any uh, insurance benefit? Unfortunately, it's, 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 it doesn't work like that. It's a little bit messier. So it's, it's, you have, if you're working full time, regardless how much you're making, you're ineligible for unemployment insurance. I see. And then the $600 cutoff is a separate cutoff related to, um, related to partial, related to if someone is working part time and earning some money, how the benefit offset works if they're working part time. But yeah, there's Got it. Thank you. Factors. Okay, the next question is, my UI is running out. Can I use pandemic unemployment assistance afterwards, even if my UI balance hits zero? Yes, so the answer, the short answer is yes. The, lo the longer answer is that um, normally in California, unemployment insurance lasts 26 weeks. The federal stimulus bill added 13 additional weeks to, to unemployment insurance and there will likely be yet another 13 additional weeks um, under, under uh, a program called extended benefits that triggers when there's periods of high unemployment. Once all of those programs are exhausted, then you can hop, go, hop onto pandemic unemployment assistance for uh, some additional weeks, although it, it likely isn't will not be the full 39 weeks that you can usually get on pandemic unemployment assistance. So a person in that situation should be able to get 13 additional weeks under pandemic extended, uh, extended unemployment compensation. Uh, and, and that should happen soon. I will say that people who are waiting for the, who, are, who have already exhausted their unemployment benefits are still waiting for those 13 additional weeks and the, the employment development department has not yet given guidance about when that program is going to be available. And I, um, I know that's incredibly frustrating to people who are in that situation more than frustrating. It's incredibly unfair. Um, you will, you will eventually get the benefits that you're entitled to. Um, and you are entitled to those benefits, but I understand that, um, that, that doesn't mean much when the money, when you've been waiting for over a month already to get those benefits. Okay, um, the next question is, do I qualify for unemployment if I lost 80% of income but didn't earn any income in 2019? Yeah, so that worker likely, if they applied in March, they likely won't be eligible for unemployment insurance. But if that worker applied in April, they likely will be eligible for unemployment insurance. I know that's very um, confusing, but basically, the first three months of 2020 will be part of what's called your base period or your alternate base period to so the period of time that, that EDD looks to see if you have sufficient earnings. Um, and if, if you apply to April, but, that, but the first three months of 2020 will not be part of your alternate base period if you applied in March. So that person might be eligible for unemployment. The, the good thing is if they're not eligible for unemployment, they will be eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance. So either way, they should apply. It's the same application. They should just truthfully enter in, in all their information, including their full work history. And if they are, turn out to be eligible for unemployment insurance, great. If not, they can get onto pandemic unemployment assistance. Okay, and then the last, I think we only have time for one more question. Um, I am the employee of a, my own S Corp and have not yet run payroll for this year. My purchase order contract has been terminated early, ending on the 20th of this month due to the pandemic. Will I be eligible for unemployment benefits in California? Yeah, so if that person is paying into the uh, unemployment insurance system, uh, then and they worked in 2019, then they should be eligible for unemployment insurance. But if they didn't, um, 
that they didn't know they'll be eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance. And I just, uh, I just would need a little bit more information about their, about how they're operating their, um, their entity to understand whether or not they're, they're eligible as for pandemic unemployment assistance or unemployment insurance. Regardless, they, they should be eligible for one of those two programs. But for, for someone who's running their own business, they also might want to look into the second iteration of the Paycheck Protection Program, which I think still has money um, available. And if, especially if they're, if they are, if they normally pay themselves more than a thousand dollars a week, then they'll likely be better off under the Paycheck Protection Program than under the um, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. All right. Okay. And that's, I think that's all we have time for. Okay. And if there's any uh, further questions, again, feel free to contact my office. The telephone number is 408-262-2501. I want to thank George for providing this, uh, a lot of information in, in, in this hour. And uh, uh, also, this is an issue that during this uh, shelter in place, my district office, all the uh, staff member uh, uh, answering a lot of those uh, unemployment benefit calls. You know, the number just went off the roof. So uh, thank you very much. I hope that if my office ha has further questions, can also uh, call you up, George. My pleasure. That's, that's been a persistent uh, feature of these town halls. <laughs> all right, great. Thank you so much for uh, all of you taking time to join us today. I know, again, this is a very difficult time. You know, just through this uh, uh, one hour of town hall, I know the, the pandemic not just affecting the lower uh, uh, wage worker, but it really affecting all of us. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, just hanging in there, I hope we'll be able to uh, get over it sooner than later. You know, wear your uh, mask when you're in public. Make sure you keep a social distance and wash your hands and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, we will have another um, town hall in Spanish tomorrow at four o'clock, uh, three o'clock, the three o'clock, four, four o'clock. And then another one in um, Vietnamese on, on Thursday. So if you know of anybody, they may have some questions regarding to the employment benefit, uh, please encourage them to sign on uh, tomorrow in Spanish and Thursday in Vietnamese. With that, I hope you all well, you know, shelter in place and uh, take care of yourself. Thank you for joining us.